crossover fighting games are interesting beasts. You have the old standbys, you have the inclusions clearly meant to promote or capitalize from recent or anticipated popularity, characters that make you wonder why it took so long for them to even show up in the first place, and of course, the completely left field unexpected choices. Sometimes though, you'll get characters who objectively fit well into a roster, but their inclusion might make you think, huh, wonder who went to bat to get that through. I vividly recall this being my reaction when Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was initially announced alongside promotional art including silhouettes for unrevealed characters, one of which was very obviously Trish from the Devil May Cry series. Trish is a demon created by Mundus, the main antagonist of the first Devil May Cry game and the demonic ruler that orchestrated the murder of Eva, the mother of Dante and Virgil. Trish is designed in the image of Eva herself and it's this resemblance that piques Dante's interest in hearing out Trish at the beginning of the game, and what subsequently lures him to Malay Island, where Mundus himself was sealed away. Before long though, Trish reveals her true allegiance, luring Dante into an ambush. Things go south though, and Dante saves her, but makes clear that he wants nothing to do with her. Mundus chastises Trish for her failure, implying dire consequences. As Dante is about to confront Mundus later in the game, he reveals one last trap, a captured Trish. This catches Dante off guard enough that Mundus is able to launch a surprise attack on him. But before Mundus can deliver the final blow, Trish breaks free and pushes him out of the way, seemingly sacrificing herself. She got better though. She assists Dante against Mundus' final form by giving him some of her power, which he uses to finish Mundus off, with the two escaping Malay Island by plane. She sticks around and ends up joining Dante's devil hunting business, now using Dante's Sparta sword and two pistols of her own, Lu Sinomba. She appears in the Devil May Cry anime, which I mention mostly because it's actually canon to the games, taking place between Devil May Cry 1 and 2. Here she's going freelance but still assists Dante with cases every now and then. By the end of the series, she's joined back up as a part of Dante's business though. She doesn't show up in the games in a story capacity again until Devil May Cry 4, where she's present in an early game scene where a lady briefs Dante about the Order of the Sword. Before they can all even coordinate a plan though, Trish has already left, seemingly having her own plan. Around the same time, a mysterious woman named Gloria appears as part of the Order of the Sword and quickly rises up their ranks after having presented them Sparta's sword. It's revealed later in the game that Gloria is Trish in disguise hoping to gain some intel on the Order from the inside. She drops the act after Dante and Nero's second fight though. In Devil May Cry 5, she along with Dante and Lady confront the mysterious Arisen, but things go sideways and he defeats everyone, taking Lady and Trish in particular and using them to create new demons. In Trish's case, she's used to create Cavalier Angelo. Dante encounters Cavalier and after a battle, which by the way, absolutely goaded boss fight, Dante is able to free Trish. She takes a backseat for the rest of the game while recovering, though she does get two important interactions with V and Nero later on in the game. Even before showing up in the Versus games, Trish has made a few cameos outside of the series here and there. She shows up in the PS2 version of Beautiful Joe, taking the place of Sylvia in Dante's story scenario, and also appears as a costume for Sylvia herself in Red Hot Rumble. I also recall her being the PS2 memory card save icon for Devil May Cry 1 as well. She even gets all sad if you decide to delete the save file. Trish formally joined the Versus series alongside Dante in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and the story of how she got into the game is pretty interesting. According to the game's producer, Ryota Natsuma, when making choices for the Capcom side of the roster in the Versus games, the development team would choose characters, and then go to the development team responsible for said series and ask for their approval for use in the game. This was mentioned in a few interviews for characters that did and didn't get into the series. When Ace Attorney series creator Shu Takumi was initially approached about the possibility of Phoenix Wright appearing in Tatsunoko vs Capcom, he was apparently thrilled and admitted he was a little sad when it didn't pan out. For Marvel 3 specifically, the development team initially asked the Monster Hunter team about the possibility of including a character, and they outright said no. Obviously, things changed down the line, but still. When it came to Dante, the development team knew from the start that they wanted to include him and went to the team responsible for that series and asked for their blessing. 
According to Natsuma, they were enthusiastic about it and consented to his inclusion. However, they had one condition. They'd let them add Dante to the roster, but also wanted them to add Trish, which, well, obviously they obliged. Trish's Marvel 3 moveset is interesting because it borrows most from what was at the time her only playable appearance in a DMC game, Devil May Cry 2. In DMC 2, she was an unlockable character, wielding Dante's Sparta Sword and inheriting Dante's general moveset from the first game, including Dante's Ifrit attacks, as well as her lightning-based powers displayed in DMC 1's cutscenes. Everybody knows that DMC2 ain't exactly the greatest game, so I won't harp on that too much, but playing as Trish is probably the closest that game gets to approaching fun, so it's neat to see that piece of the series represented here somewhat. Trish also shows up in the Episode 2 trailer for Marvel 3's initial release, riding a motorcycle that seems loosely modeled after the one she uses in the Devil May Cry 1 intro. Like in that game, she doesn't seem to have any qualms about completely trashing it. Trish's English voice actor in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is Danielle Bergia, who also voiced her in Devil May Cry 4. Despite voicing Trish in those two titles, she's far more known for her work as a stunt actor, having worked on various movies like Blade, Daredevil, and the first two Matrix sequels. She also notably provided the motion capture for Trish in Devil May Cry 4 as well. Her Japanese voice actor is Atsuko Tanaka, who initially voiced her in the Devil May Cry anime and also voiced her in most of Trisha's subsequent video game appearances up to and including DMC5. Tanaka is no stranger to voicing badass action women though. One of her best known roles is as the voice of Motoko Kusanagi, the protagonist of Ghost in the Shell, but has a long, long list of characters under her belt. She's Bayonetta's Japanese voice actor, also voiced Chun-Li in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Capcom Fighting Evolution, and Namco Cross Capcom, the latter of which she also voiced Regina from Dino Crisis in. She was the voice of Hibana in Sega's Nightshade, as well as her appearance in Project Cross Zone 2, Conan in Naruto, Opera in Star Ocean 2, Otomishi in the Dissidia games, Poison in just about everything from Third Strike onwards, Kaine in Nier, and way too many more to even list. All that said, let's get into her moveset. Trisha's character theme in Marvel 3 is a remix of Lock and Load, the second battle theme in Devil May Cry 1. Of the normal non-boss battle themes in DMC 1, this is the one I think probably stands out the most for a lot of people, so remixing it was a smart call in my opinion. Trish is a character with quite a few useful tools. She has a flight mode, an 8-way air dash, a dive kick, projectiles that can trap opponents that can be confirmed in the combos, and an excellent hyper combo for DHCing. Her game plan is simple. You use her projectile traps to make opponents second guess their approach, and if they slip up or leave themselves open, you use them and her honestly pretty solid normals to start converting combos into. She sits at about 850k health wise, which puts her in the same health tier as characters like Magneto and Virgil, so if someone manages to land a hit on her, it can be dangerous for her if they have their stuff optimized. As I mentioned earlier, Trisha's kid in this game is largely taken from her playable DMC2 appearance, and that goes for a handful of her normals as well as her special moves. Trisha's launcher, for example, is modeled after High Time, which she had in DMC2. Dante also has the DMC3 High Time variation as his launcher as well. Virgil's High Time, also from DMC3, is a command normal instead of a standard launcher, though. Stiletto Kick is Trisha's aerial command normal. This is a dive kick that gets Trish to the ground relatively quickly, but Trish has to be at a certain height for the move to activate. Too low and it won't come out. This is also special cancelable, so canceling it into her two projectile traps are sometimes a good idea. Though the animation isn't the same, I'd be shocked if giving Trish a dive kick wasn't meant to be a nod to the jump kick that she has in DMC2 that she inherits from Dante's DMC1 Ifrit moveset. Her first special move is Low Voltage, done with a quarter circle forward and attack. Trish fires out a fast moving, electric projectile. The bunch drum dictates how many projectiles come out, with the medium and heavy versions firing 2 and 3 respectively. This can be done in the air as well, and Trish will fire them at a 45 degree angle there. Trish's lightning powers in DMC1 are the obvious inspiration here. 
but this seems to specifically take from DMT too, where she can fire off lightning projectiles during her Devil Trigger mode. Her next special move is Trick Hopscotch, done with a quarter circle back and light attack. Trish sets down a magical glyph on the floor. If an opponent travels over it, a lightning projectile springs forth from the glyph. Notably, the opponent doesn't have to be on the ground to trigger this. If they pass over it in the air, this will trigger the glyph as well, actually giving it some decent utility in air combos for Trish. The glyph only stays active for a few seconds and disappears if Trish is hit, so do be careful. Trick Peekaboo is done with a quarter circle back and medium attack. Trish puts up a glyph just above and in front of her position. I've got you now. If the opponent runs into it, they'll be immobilized for a bit. This one is even harder to see than Hopscotch and is only denoted by a few faint streaks of lightning and a cloud on its position. This is a lot harder to see on darker stages, but on commonly used stages like Bone Wonderland, it's a little easier to see. Do note that this move is subject to hitstun deterioration, so it's best to use to convert into a combo, as doing it later on in the combo will have the opponent escape before Trish can do anything. Where to circle back and attack is a DMC classic, Round Trip. Great. Trish throws Sparta out, dealing multiple hits. It stays out for a beat before returning to Trish, dealing damage on the return trip as well. It has a pretty long startup though, so it's pretty risky to do outside of combos if not set up well. Round Trip is a Devil May Cry staple, with Dante, Virgil, and Trish all getting variations of it over the years. Trish can do multiple unique things when Round Trip is out. For one, because Barda is away, she loses access to any normals that use the sword. Instead, they get replaced with hand-to-hand -hand combat moves like a kick for a standing heavy. This is more or less identical to the bare knuckle attacks Trish can use in DMC2 when Round Trip is active there. Trish also gets access to a new move during Round Trip's duration, Switch Sign. Depending on the button you press in combination with the Dragon Punch motion, Trish can manipulate Sparta in a few different ways. The light version slows down Sparta a bit so that it'll hit a few extra times and deal more damage. The medium version instead speeds up Sparta, and the heavy version will momentarily stop Sparta in place before resuming its regular path. The light version in particular is in theory an infinite since you can do some tricky repeated try jumps to keep Sparta away, but it's both incredibly hard to do and not very practical. This move is possibly based on Trish's ability to manipulate round trip speed and duration in Devil May Cry 2. There, Depending on when she presses L2 or left trigger depending on the controller, she can keep round trip out longer or have it return her quickly. Air Raid is Trish's flight mode. While most of her normals are special cancelable and thus can cancel into this, it has some startup, so it's not as practical for combos as you'd think. However, this still gives her a significant degree of mobility, and combined with her 8-way air dash, gives her a great way to get around the screen and zone. Air Raid was Trish's flight mode from Devil May Cry 2 as well, complete with yellow glow. Trish's first hyper combo is Maximum Voltage. Wonderful. This is essentially a powered up version of her standard low voltage projectile. In Ultimate Marvel 3 specifically, this was given OTG properties, so with a jump or optimally a tiger knee motion after a hard knockdown, Trish can combo into this on a grounded opponent. Trish's second hyper combo is Round Harvest. How about you? Awesome. How about you? Yeah. Awesome. This one's a powered up version of Round Trip that's stationary and stays out way longer. This is a great hyper combo to use if you want to safely tag an opponent in without having the DHC, though that's a safe option too. Like Round Trip, Trish loses access to her Sparta normals while this is active and if she's hit during it, the super ends. Trish's level 3 is Duet Pain, done with a Dragon Punch motion and two attacks. Trish plants Sparta into the ground before it launches the opponent into the air for a cinematic. Well, 
This one has some startup, and while it can be comboed into, it's pretty strict about what routes will cleanly combo into it. The animation of Trish planting Sparta into the ground is taken from Devil May Cry 2. There, Trish can do this on command to gain access to her bare knuckle moveset without having to have round trip out. Trish's first assist is Trick Hopscotch. Trish's second assist is Trick Peekaboo. Trish's third assist is Low Voltage. Here are all of Trish's colors. Color 2 is based off of Dante. Color 3 is based off of Rainbow Mika from the Street Fighter series. Color 4 is based off of Virgil. Color 5 is based off of Dante's Color 5, which in turn is based off of Taskmaster's Frightful 4 color. The Frightful 4 are a supervillain team that predictably oppose the Fantastic 4. Think the Sinister 6, but far less effective. The rosters rotated a bunch over the years, though a constant is the team being assembled by Fantastic 4 villain The Wizard. Even Sinister 6 alumni like Electro and Sandman have been on the team at different points in time. Sandman himself being one of the founding members. Trish's Color 6 is based on both Tron Bon and June from Star Gladiator. In Vanilla Marvel 3, Trish had a color that resembled Gloria from Devil May Cry 4. Ultimate went the extra mile and gave Trish a full on Gloria costume instead, complete with a different color glow for Sparta. Here are all of Trish's character interactions. I'll try not to leave visible marks. Don't think I'm gonna go easy on you. Get ready to brawl! Do I fight too dirty, Dante? So you're the god of thunder. Really? Surrender is thine only wise choice. You have similar powers, but you don't know me. I thought a twin of Dante would be more fun. How repulsive. Get ready to brawl! Well, you're as hard-headed as Dante, at least. about taking over the universe. Additionally, Trish has a generic win quote that I want to touch on for a bit. This one's an obvious reference to this infamous DMC1 cutscene. I should have saved you. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! And here's Trish's ending.
At the beginning of the video, I said Trish objectively fits the game, but her inclusion made me wonder who gave her the vote of confidence, and apparently the DMC team themselves did. And I'm glad they did so. One day, I picked up Trish and Vanilla Marvel 3 on a whim, and now, she along with Wesker are my two most played characters in the game. I also think it's fascinating to see Devil May Cry 2 somewhat represented in this game through her. People with enough fortitude to play through that game and unlock her generally seem to agree that she's probably the only legit fun part of the game, and I'm glad some of that was mined for Marvel here. After Marvel 3, Trish appeared in Devil May Cry 5 as mentioned earlier, but of particular note is the release of Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, which added Trish, Lady, and Virgil as playable characters to the game. Trish herself was directly stated by DMC series head Hideki Itsuno to have her general projectile trap and lockdown playstyle there, inspired by her Marvel vs. Capcom appearance. Trish also appeared in Teppin and was actually a pivotal character in one specific storyline, both in her Gloria guise and in her regular form. All that said, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.